Steve Larson, and I'm here to substitute for Scotty. Uh, Scotty uh, was unable to attend the convention this year, so. Um, but we're going to talk about the uh, first off an update on the Tangerine SDR. So we've been making some progress with the Tangerine. Tangerine SDR, and I wanted to mention, this is what our objectives were from the, um, uh, it listed on our, tapper web, our Tangerine SDR website. Then we're going to try to develop a, a SDR radio that allow experimental use in radio modes, we want to provide, un, provide it to unaffiliated groups that need these radios. We want to provide hardware modularity and we want to uh, allow a variety of performance capabilities and make it interact with a networking system fairly well. So, where we are is we have the magnetometer here, and we do have some in the, booth, in the Tapper booth for sale. We will have a working magnetometer uh, on the table, and the, the magnetometers are kind of an odd thing for hands to get used to because um, what it's doing is measuring magnetic fields in three dimensions. The sensor is sensitive to magnetic radiation that you have in the building or in your hand gear or uh, servos and things. So we, you have to take the sensor board and bury it in the ground in your backyard or out in your yard. We usually have a 100-foot run of uh, Cat6 uh, cable because the cable actually runs 5 volts through to the, the board in the ground. But obviously, the board in the ground has to be protected from I have one at my house that I've been running for two years now, and it is continuing to work and load, upload data. So that's the longest running one we have. So that's here. We have some for sale, um, and we will uh, uh, show those in the booth. I'll give, I have a little bit later on that. Um, we do have the data engine. The data engine a board that would kind of coordinate all the pieces and our data engine, I'm going to show you pictures of all these things in a minute. The data engine it has been continuity tested and cleaned. We're still in development and the Verilog programming is still in progress. Uh, we have a clock module. Uh, I'm going to talk shortly about it, but uh, John talk more about his other clock modules, but we probably mentioned this one as well. And it has uh, been tested. We found that there were three reworks? Two. Two, two reworks that we had to do by hand on the current prototype, and we'll get those. So it, it's still in development. We have an RF module that was built, which is a coherent, uh, dual A to D's that, but receive only at this point. <clears throat> it has been continuity tested and is still in development. We do have some uh, issues that happened over the last five years, <coughs> a few years since we started this project. We've had COVID issues, we've had supply chain issues, we've had FPGA mark <laughs> and we are continuing to have a few firmware compiler issues. Uh, big, that's also an issue. <laughs> so here's a picture of a magnetometer. The magnetometer consists of a Raspberry Pi, a connector board, and it uses Cat6 cable, but it's not networking. And it's also 
carrying a fivefold power to the external board, and the external board is at the bottom, and it has a PNI magnetometer board, which has been shown to be very credible magnetometer uh, data collector. And so that's the, the basic parts. Uh, it fits inside a tube, and I have this tube available in the booth so you can look at it. But you basically have to do some PVC plumbing to make a watertight tube that you can put in the ground. And it should not be next to your antenna. It should be in a different spot in the yard. And here's an example. We're running about 100 feet out from your house, putting the tube. The top of the tube is above ground. The, the sensor is below ground. And it needs to be uh, oriented. So there are three little bars on the board, and you need to select one to be pointing north, and make, uh, true north, not magnetic north. And so you have to uh, deal with the axes, and it depends on the way you put it inside the tube. There's a standard way to do it, but that doesn't mean you can't do it wrong. Um, and then there is, the fact that you need to understand something about the difference between magnetic north and true north. We're assuming the data is about uh, the true axis. And so if you have a declination at your location, you have to set the declination as part of the process. Many of you have learned this before. Um, just for example, I live in Missouri, my declination is half a degree, so it's on, they're, they're lining up as you're looking north. But if you're in Portland, um, Portland, Maine, it's about 16 degrees to the west, and if you're in Portland, Oregon, it's about 16 degrees to the east. And if you're in Europe, it, it's actually more complicated. So the Years ago, the magnetic north was near Hudson Bay. It has moved north, and it is now out in the Arctic Ocean. And they're coming closer, but they aren't exactly the same. So it depends on your angles between those two locations. Um, anyway, that's the, the <coughs> magnet tower board, which is completed. It is available to purchase. We have a website that helps you set it up. This is the data engine board, which has uh, uh, an Altera or a uh, Max 10 FPGA. It has a uh, a bus that's similar to the one bus you. Boards that are built for Raspberry Pis can be plugged in. The two fingers that look like M2 fingers at the bottom are not M2 fingers. They're M2 connectors, but not the same wiring. And those allow the uh, audio board or the RF boards to be plugged in, and they actually fit underneath it. And I'll show you that in a minute. So that's the top. That's the bottom. There's not a huge amount on the bottom, but there is some. This is the RF board. So it's two parallel uh, A to Ds with filtering, and uh, they pipe essentially um, the, the RF signal through and send it to the data board, the data engine board. These, <clears throat> I have a prototype and I can show you this as well. This is the, the M.2 looking uh, adapter. It is not wired the same way as M.2 board. And it has dual RFs, so it's two receivers on, and they're time synced. Uh, the 
fellow who's working on this is, is quite good at the timing. This is the clock module, and this is the one that our next speaker developed. It is a, uh, a U blocks chip on a board. I will let you explain the board, John. Um, but it, it is to provide a timestamp for those dual receive uh, channels, as well as timing issues. Other elsewhere in the radio. And this is the bottom of that board. Um, and we did get, in the testing, we found two, two things to fix. This is the clock module on the top of the data engine. This is the RF module plugged into the bottom. And it has uh, accommodations for two RF boards to fit on the data engine. We're having challenges. One is in the data engine, the FPGA uh, software that we're using doesn't have a native TCP uh, stack. And so what we were planning to do is there is a NIOS, so it's, it's like a little Linux that fits in, it's a simplified Linux, but it fits in the FPGA. And when it comes up, it provides a TPC, a, a TCP stack. Um, but then we have to write some code in the FPGA itself, and we also end up having to connect those. And that's where we're having a little bit of uh, challenges with the current software. Um, and we are looking for people who are uh, very long programmers that might want to uh, help us. Okay, if you want to talk about this more, we have the Tapper booth. It's in uh, 5009, 10, and 11. And we'd be happy to talk to, uh, talk to you more about this.